Can you talk to us about the outlook on the equities performance? We've just talked about um, the pain that you've endured there. Has the situation normalized? Is the worst behind you? Is it going to improve from here? Thank you very much, Nira. So if I might just to comment on the last you just quoted, it's non-cash items which have impacted severely our bottom line this quarter. And uh, it's non-cash, it's depreciation of uh, our, some goodwill and deferred tax assets. So on your pure cash views, our bottom line is positive this quarter, which is very important to mention. And we have a limited net profit of 70 million, but it's positive. It's very fair to say that the, the crisis has been peaked in April until mid-May. The good news for me is that since mid-May, we see a significant and encouraging rebound of all our businesses, and including in our global market activity, as you just mentioned. And our equity business, which has been the most impacted in the first quarter and at the beginning of the second quarter, is rebounding since mid-May today. On what today? Okay, so and, and certainly FICC has done well, and the equity side perhaps a little bit less than the market had expected. When we caught up with you at the end of the first quarter, the guidance for COVID exposure for this year was around 70 basis points for 2020. Is that still the case? Has that deteriorated? And can you guide the market in terms of that accelerating or as is? You saw on the second quarter that the, our loan losses and the cost of risk has increased significantly. This is mainly due to this new IFRS 9 rule, which we have to anticipate some possible loan losses. But we are maintaining our guidance, and more than that, we are now the 70 to 100 basis point loss on the credit side we mentioned, in our view, which should be should be closer to the 70 basis points, the low end of this range. And for me, this quarter is the peak in terms of credit classes. Now, if I may, coming back to the, the fixed income uh, you alluded to, this quarter in terms of fixed income has been a record quarter for us also, as all the other profession. The fact that Societe Generale is less exposed to this fixed income activity means that we have not so big impact on the bottom line. We are more geared, as you know, on the equity and specifically on structured equity products. But we, may, we benefited this quarter from a very good fixed income activity, and it is a record quarter for us. And if I may say on other businesses, I am providing like the global banking and investment banking. This has been also a record quarter for this financing and investment banking activity. So the fact that Societe Generale is more geared on equity structured products is impacting us, but globally speaking, all the rest of the franchise is doing well this quarter. Okay, interesting. Um, in that case, then, um, let's talk about the review that you've announced, um, because you've just been talking um, about the trading business. What are the main changes that you're going to implement in the trading business, Severin? The main point I want to make is we have a leading position, a worldwide leading position in investment solution with equity structured underlying. We have decided to protect this franchise, but to avoid to be so sensitive to such market dislocation as we had to manage in the first quarter and the beginning of the second quarter, we have decided to adjust our product mix. We will to have products we are less sensitive to this market dislocation, meaning to high correlation, to dividend consolation, and to instability in terms of volatility. So we have, as you know, a number of engineers over the last 30 years inventing new products in this area, and we are completely equipped, in my view, to design new products to be less sensitive to that. So we will protect our structured, equity structured franchise. It will have a small impact on our revenue on the long term, but we have also decided to reduce in addition to what we already done last year, our cost base, so we will have probably 5% decrease in our top line with this new product mix we are targeting. But the cost base will be reduced by more than $400 million by year. So in all, we are protecting the return and the profitability of this business on the long run. So, Severin, uh, obviously the ECB has sent out a new missive. Dividends are to remain on hold until the start of next year. I want to get a sense from you. It, do you do you believe that that's a prudent move? Do you support that move? And more importantly for the market, the scale of the excess capital that you might have at the end of the year, albeit you might not be able to distribute it because of restraint, but the size of excess capital that you expect at the end of the year. 
you, the, the big point you mentioned, as you saw at the end of the second quarter, our core equity tier one is at 12.5 percent, which is above the consensus first, and secondly, which is a very a significant good and high level. This is one of the demonstrations why this crisis is impacting severely associated in our PNL, but the solidity of the bank, which is represented by our core tier one, is still very, very solid and very. Very, very good parameter, if I may say. So, as you said, the ECB has forbidden this distribution of dividend by the end of this year. Our expectation and our hope, but it's not our decision. And we could come back to our previous dividend policy, which, as I remain, is a 50 percent payout as soon as we can. But it's really depending on the ECB decision. Okay. Um, you just um, gave us a number in terms of cost cuts as well, uh, Severin, in the trading business. So talk to us a little bit more about that. How are you going to carry those out specifically? Very clearly. So, you know, we have, first of all, I want to mention that this quarter we had a cost decrease around 10 percent compared to last year. It's just to show you that in our global business and investor solution, in global banking and investment solution activity, we have the labor to reduce our cost base. Last year, as you know, we announced a, a first cost reduction plan. We did deliver in nine months. And now we are in a position to do more. Mainly is through our, if I may, typical uh, levers, which are the straight, the processes optimization, the offshoring levers we have, and in some cases we are more integrating front to back all the business we have. We will be also stricter on what we have in terms of discretionary spend, if I may say. Well, you, you have experienced this year a very low traveling cost, a very low eventual cost, if I may say, communication cost. We will maintain those costs at a lower level in the long run, and we will continue to optimize our prices. Sevan, can I just ask you on the French economy? We just had very historical data, obviously, on the GDP. Everybody suffered in this second quarter. How is the business performing in the French retail bank? Just give us a flavor of what the consumer is doing. We just spoke to HSBC. The consumers are paying off debt, and he's worried about the commercial arm. How does it fall for you? The French economy has been one of the most severely impacted by the crisis, I would say, until mid-May. And we saw during this quarter a very low level of service fees in the retail activity, no transaction, for example, and an increase in terms of deposits, on site deposits. This had a negative impact on our P&L because no less fees and the deposits with negative interest rate is costly for the bank. Having said that, we have observed since the mid of May a significant rebound in terms of transaction, in terms of activity uh, of our clients in France. So, we are recovering fast um, to, up to now, if, if I may say, in the retail activity in France. One part of the activity was, during this quarter, the significant production in terms of state granting loans. So we had a very significant activity in terms of loan production. Societe Generale produced 19 billion of state granted loans during this quarter. And, but the issue on the PNL was mainly the service fees and the lower uh, transactions of our clients. And now it's going better. 